Okay, <laughs> we are live for episode number 13 on Inside the Junior Rain, where we give you behind the scenes look on what goes into delivering our mission on creating a life-changing experience through youth sport and through youth ice hockey. Uh, my name is Ben Frank, I'm the club president. With me as always is Paul Esdell, our chief of hockey operations. And I'm just gonna make sure that we're streaming properly today, uh, not sideways. We've had some technical <laughs> difficulties in the past and I think we are good. How's the volume? Sure Looks like we're good. <laughs> All right, and I'm just gonna keep this open so we can see the comments and things that come in. Um, and answer any questions that you may have. As always, uh, we, we, we have a lot of replay uh, viewers, so whether you're watching us live or via the replay, we really appreciate it when you make comments, uh, questions, give us a thumbs up in the comment section, let us know you're watching, even if you don't have a specific question. Uh, we'd love to interact with the community, whether you're inside or outside of our club. And if you like what you hear, we really appreciate your shares. We've been a lot of good shares recently, um, and that's been allowing our message to get out to more people. So we appreciate you sharing, liking, and commenting on this episode, whether you're watching live or via the replay. So today's episode, uh, the title in the uh, in the episode listing there is pressure. Uh, good, bad, when, why? Uh, we hear a lot about pressure in sports and also in youth sports. So we want to talk today about what that is, where it's coming from, how it can be damaging at times uh, or counterproductive to maybe what the goals we're trying to accomplish are. Uh, maybe it's place in pro sports and, and in youth sports and then how some specific things we do We've talked in the past episodes about our curriculum and the experience documents um, We went through the last couple of weeks we went through the mindset Section and we went through ignition to learning last week and the next phase in that experience part of the curriculum is the positive coaching alliance culture and how that Implemented in our organization with the kids can impact their growth as as athletes and people So we'll speak a little bit to that about how that applies to pressure. So uh, first off, Paul, why don't you start with kind of um, some of the places that uh, pressure rears its ugly head in youth <laughs> sports and maybe where, where, what that all looks right, like. Right, right. Well, I think when you're talking about pressure, you're talking about a couple different ways, right? There's internal pressure, right? The pressure you put on yourself to, to do a specific task or a sport, right? And then there's the external pressure. And that's now, that's the outside pressure, right? That's from either teammates, coaches, uh, environment, culture, those kind of things. So I think understanding that first is really important. Mm -hmm. And then obviously different ages, there's there's different awareness of pressure, right? And pressure is not always a bad thing. It's not always a good thing. I think there's good pressure, right? When, when, when you're talking about young athletes, um, putting some sort of expectations on themselves to to perform in a certain way is, is, is a good thing. But it's, it's depending on how they look at it and how they measure it, I think, is really critical. How they measure their successes. And I think that's sometimes when we get hung up in the youth hockey world or youth sports world is we're not always using the same scoreboard and the correct scoreboard mm -hmm. on how we're measuring that. And we're feeling this. I, I just know from experience from, from seeing kids that there's all this external pressure on them to win hockey games, yeah. right? And then you really take a, try to take a step back and say, well, why do you even want to win, right? What does it mean to win this hockey game? You know, what are the positive, what are the negatives? What, what can you learn from winning? What can you learn from the losing aspect of the thing? So there's a lot of stuff going on. And we're, remember, we're dealing with youth hockey players developing and maturing all together, right? So sports in general provides great platform to handle pressure and adversity, right? So I think that's understanding that right away is there's, there's that internal, the external, but the sport really provides a lot of that without having to create it on our own. Right, and that's one of the great things about youth sports, right? It creates this environment that's, you know, that, that makes diamonds out of, out of dirt, right? Uh, th that, that creates these opportunities for learning and for growth and for feeling pressure and things that, uh, naturally, the, the, that sport already does that. It creates that environment in which coaches and parents and things can have an impact on kids through sport, which is what we talk about a lot. And I think you keyed on, really, the key point there is pressure to what? Pressure and, and so how you define those things from the, the get-go of what you're trying to accomplish and everyone being on the same page with that. If it's pressure to win, if it's pressure on outcomes, pressure to score goals, three goals this game or to score a goal this game, those are outcome-based things and that can be misdirected, right? And, and creating pressure on outcomes that are oftentimes uncontrollable, make things 
not about the something and then if it's something that the athlete can't control it all becomes out of their hands and not under their control let me speak to that a little yeah bit. i think i think even just looking back at my hockey career my dad was a career coach for 25 years right and you think there'd be a ton of pressure on me to yeah. succeed and play college hockey and pro hockey and score all these goals and it was actually the complete opposite and i talked about this before about the pressure for me and the responsibility for me was to give everything i had every day i stepped on the rink Mm -hmm. And to be a good teammate, so there was a there was a, there was kind of an honoring of the game, and that was the pressure I felt. Yeah. Like I and I had t challenges with with behaviors at time and banging my stick on the boards, that kind of stuff. That was that was the pressure that was put on me to honor the game and give everything I gave back to the game and to my teammates and give a hundred percent. And no, having the perspective of yes, yeah, some 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 years you're going to win a lot of games, some you're going to lose a lot. There's so many variables in youth sports, right? Some, there's different levels of players. There's different levels of goalies, which makes a big difference, yeah. right? So understanding and having respect of that, uh, winning's good, but also losing's good and getting the most out of both of those. And really the most you learn is through those tough times. And I think that's with life and with hockey. And that's why hockey's such a great parallel is that you, you learn so much more about yourself and your teammates and your, your family when times are tough and you kind of stick together, you work through it, and you find solutions, and it's easy to win, right? You know what I mean? When everything's going good, that's easy, right? And it's it's not, and, and just take that back, it's not easy to get to win, right? You have to work through all these processes to win. But when you're winning, things are easy, right? It's not as difficult, but then when you're losing, how do you handle that, right? And, and understanding those differences, and I think as a, as a kid growing up in Edmonton, Alberta, which is a, you know, a ton of hockey there, having, my dad, the perspective and guidance of what really was important, what our scoreboard was, right. right? Our scoreboard was, you know, effort and team teamwork, being a good mm -hmm. teammate. That was our scoreboard. And if I could do those things every time I stepped on the rink or every time I was in the classroom, um, you know, if I continue that every day, did the right thing, did the right thing, did the right thing, it could build into something. Yeah. I may have the opportunity to play more. Right. right, whatever that is, junior, college, pro, whatever it was. And sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But the, the thing that we see a lot today is the amount of pressure that is put on kids to win one single hockey game. The focus is so short term, it's so minute, and you're seeing it really negative affect people, how their behavior and how they how they connect with the game. And that's what I what's I think that's the challenge we see a lot. Absolutely. And so that's, that's why it's so important to do some thinking around this and to talk about these things. And you talk about create the scoreboard, the scorecard, to have these clear things that everyone can be on the same page with. Because I think, you know, we, we don't want to uh, come across incorrectly here in that uh, oftentimes pressure from the external, what we're talking about pressure is that from that external environment. And that's what can often be damaging or can have the opposite effect that we, that people want it to have. And that pressure can come from coaches who are putting, and I've been there, I've done it as a coach, <laughs> put pressure on the kids. Uh, on a certain result, this game's really important. Yeah. Or we, we, you know, we got when, when those kids, those kids should be trying their hardest every game, right? Yeah. And, and, and usually, actually, as I've learned as a coach, at a higher pressure game, you actually want to relieve the pressure a little bit rather than add more pressure on top because there's that natural pressure there anyways, right? Or pressure from the parents, so right, so for or from teammates. So for most of the time, pressure is coming from some a, play, a good place where a parent, a coach teammate, whatever, they want to do well. They want to see their child succeed, have success. They want to see their team do well and succeed. And so uh, it's, that's why it's so important to step back and, and look at, well, what, what, are our, what are the things that we are important to us? What are the things under our control? And what do we want to focus on uh, and put some pressure behind? And what do, we, what do we not want to do that with, right? And so oftentimes that's not defined at, at the beginning. And the easy thing to do is look at the scoreboard and look at the number of goals and things like that. And oftentimes not much else is looked at. And if parents are on one page and coaches are on another page and kids are on another page, that can be confusing. That's where this kind of different pressures, and now there's a lot of different pressure on the kids and that causes them to tighten up, that causes it to not be as much fun. And usually you have a worse result, which self puts more pressure and makes yeah. things makes things and worse. I, and I think everyone's trying to help, right, and do the right thing for the kids. And sometimes as coaches and parents, it's that extra pressure that it's not really directed. Instead of saying, we have to win this game, I think the, the way to do it as a coach or as a parent is ask the kid how they feel. Do you feel, are, are you, do you, you know, how do you feel before the game? And some kids say, oh, I'm, I'm nervous, I'm nervous. Yeah. And that's when we're like, great, 
Yeah. That's good pressure. Yeah. That why why do you hey Johnny, why do you think you feel that way? Well, I don't know. I don't know why I'm nervous. Say, well then, that means you really care. Yeah. Like this is good that's good pressure and I think that sometimes we we lose focus on that. We don't maybe don't understand that completely that there are there's a lot of good pressure, right? And the pressure is to to go out there and give your best effort, right? right? It's not just to win the game. Those are a lot of there's a lot of variables in that. But if we have that good pressure that you know someone has taking pride in what they're doing right they're taking pride in their sport in their art of what they're doing is really critical and i think sometimes it just takes a minute to step back as the adult or the coach right and we all get caught up in everything and all this excitement right but taking a step back and saying hey how, how do you feel about that and then that's when kids have the ownership and they have that intrinsic drive yeah. to succeed right and that usually starts early on with like the ignition to learning and they have that passion and that fun. Um, you know, we just heard another interview uh, during one of the Kings games. Uh, one of uh, the, our Mike dad sent it to me. It was a quick little interview. They're talking to P. Gans, PK Subban's dad. Yeah. And he was talking. So all-star NHL. All-star NHL right? defenseman has a couple boys now in the NHL and National Hockey League, pro hockey. And they're talking about how it's important as a parent to step back and get out of the way yeah. and let the kids enjoy the game and have fun and if you just keep doing that and they love it they'll want more and more and more of it and they'll they'll hold themselves accountable as they get older right. and they'll take it to wherever they're supposed to take the game right. instead of us as coaches or as adults forcing it upon them and really trying to drive them somewhere where it's not in them anyways right. and then we just we drive them off the road yeah. instead of where they actually could have been as a reaching their full potential so it's really interesting it's almost it's counterintuitive almost in a way right sometimes let to, go a to sometimes right. to let go is to actually take a step forward right and so where's that pressure coming from right and that's what we talk a lot about what are, what are we trying to get what are we here for what are we trying to get out of this and ultimately we're giving these kids an opportunity to play hockey um, we want them to get you know a lot out of it um, it has to become theirs, right? We talk a lot about this, right? If, if, if we know that if someone think about it, it makes total sense though this way, if you think about this way, if, if there's something that you absolutely love and you identify with this, this is like your thing and you want to take this as far as you can go, you put it on, you're gonna put pressure on you. You're gonna yeah. try your yeah. best to be the best that you can be. If it's something that you feel you're doing because someone else wants you to do it, because you're, and, and, and as a kid, you're not, you don't make all your own decisions yet, and someone else is, aside, is putting pressure on you to do something for them, and, and even if it's not, even if you don't, we, don't, we don't realize that that's what we're doing, but they feel that they have to, they're doing this for somebody else, the, 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 the effort level is just not gonna be the same. And then when times get tough, they won't work through it. Right. And that's what we've seen when kids quit at that age, 12, 13, 14, right? Times get tough, or now it's not, it hasn't been their thing for a couple years now, and that's why we see the numbers of kids quitting new sports, and that's the danger, right? Right, absolutely, and, and the other part that's, that makes this whole thing challenging is so we, we talk about okay, fig, figuring out, important thing is what are we gonna focus on, right? So outcomes for one, things that are not, a team, a team result in a hockey game, a youth hockey game where there's different levels of play and there's different levels of players out there and there's all kinds of different variables. First of all, that's not something under, uh, in, in one player's control, right? So if we put pressure on an individual for the team to win, it's something that they, 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 they don't have any control over individually, maybe a small, small amount that they can contribute to that. Um, and that, that diminishes motivation, right? Because if someone's all over you about something that you can't actually change, that can be very a challenging situation, the, right? The, yeah, and the scoreboard on the rink there is one measurement. Right. It cannot be the only measurement right. for that reason because you can go and play a youth hockey game and play the best game of your life. The whole team can play their best game of life and still lose the game. Yeah. Or you can play your worst game and, and win. You win. Right. And, the, right. and those are the variables in hockey at, at every level. Yeah. So that's why the scoreboard can't be the only measurement. Right. So there's the one is figuring out what, what we're gonna focus on, so where we direct pressure. Mm -hmm. Second, there's, we still gotta be careful of external pressure at, at any, in any area. Right, because what I've seen before in the past, so I'll share two stories. Okay, sure. yeah. first, early on in my coach, youth coaching career, so I've played, I've played a lot of hockey at this point, um, but early on in the youth co coaching career, I coached a squirt B team, which is the lowest level of hockey at the 10U level, and uh, I had none of these conversations, I had no PCA, no ADM, <laughs> no, none of these uh, really understanding of concepts to explain and communicate with the parent group, and I just coached the team, and I didn't run the best practices and all stuff, but I cared <laughs> about the kids, and I liked what I was doing, and we had a skilled team for that age group, and we were undefeated in the regular, in the regular season. Uh, I think we had a tie. And going into the first round of playoffs, and, and everything was final year because we were a more skilled team, and, 
it wasn't because I was a super coach and we had skilled, experienced players for the squirty level. There were kids that just didn't make the squirt A team. There was no BB at this time. So they maybe just almost made that team. And we had a ton of success all season. And everyone was pretty laid back all season. It wasn't a ton of pressure because the kids were doing so well. Walking into the rink for the playoff game, three people in a row stopped me. Parents, well, well-meaning parents. Coach, we really have to win this game. We have to win this game. And I was like, whoa, whoa. You know, kind of thing. And you could tell... In the, in the dryland kind of warm-up part that all the a number of the kids had had that same conversation in the car ride the, there and probably for days beforehand there was all kinds of you could feel I could feel this coach pressure for that team now to win now that they're in the playoffs and the team actually was extremely tight was it played the worst they played all year maybe bad coaching too at that point I, I didn't maybe relieve that pressure and we ended up getting knocked out in the first round like went like 0-3 or something like that in the right. first round and those are great examples like, yeah. why 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 did that happen? Like, why do you think they people felt that way? Uh, I think that the team had done so well. Yeah. Uh, the parents really wanted their kids to now experience that they worked all season for right. the ultimate prize. Yeah. I had never, I didn't have conversations around common goals for the season beyond scoreboard yeah. and things like that. And so there was just everyone was just doing what they thought was to help and a lot of people maybe didn't have experience in sports or coaching or hockey or whatever and so there's all these different voices and everyone wanted things to go so well just added up to that pressure and turn under pressure much around a bunch of nine ten year old kids most of them have only been playing hockey for a couple of years yeah and it'd be interesting to see if you had two kind of test groups there you had one group like that and the other test group yeah. that had no external pressure put on them from the coach yourself yeah. or the parent group and if they just went into it as a bunch of nine-year-olds going to play hockey, yeah, right at the you know at the local rink, mm -hmm. right, and and you know, see the effects and how that affects people's performance, right, and that's the interesting thing when we talk about this pressure. It doesn't mean we don't want to win, right? We right. want to win. We want to have success, but we also want to lose. We also want to understand what pressure is and deal with it properly, so it doesn't have, doesn't affect kids' performance, and they learn how to work through pressure. Yeah, right. And that, those are the differences. Well, and the funny thing is, right, is that those kids who played all the season too, and yeah. you, if anything, they were—I'm sure—they were already putting more pressure yeah. on themselves walking into that sure. game, wanting to do well in the playoffs and things like that. So now to have a bunch of external people, coaches, parents, putting extra pressure on them, caused them to, didn't cause them to perform better. Right, and that's sport will naturally create pressure. Right, right. We don't need as coaches or as parents to put more pressure on top yeah. of the pressure that has already been created right mm -hmm. and that's why like pca is a great example of the tools they use we talk about the elm tree right and that and that's focusing on mastery right of, of your sport not just scoreboard results it talks about effort right, right. focusing on the effort focusing on learning right. right and then you know e for effort l for learning and then m for bouncing back from mistakes right. knowing that mistakes are critical for players' development, right, right, and and losing a game that that counts as part of development, part of learning, and part yeah. of right, exactly. And that's why that elm tree, the focus is on that because I can control that. I can control my effort. I can control when I learn, mm -hmm. right, and I can control how I respond to mistakes. Is right? right, and those are the things we always talk about. The two two major things in in, in sport development, player development, is effort and attitude, right. right. Those two things I have complete control over. No one else controls that besides me. And it's important that you stay focused on those two things. And you, you, you know, there's still an expectation that we want to give our best to try to win the hockey game mm -hmm. or whatever sport we're doing. But understanding that those are the those are our controls, those are our measurements is important. And that's why we partner with Positive Coaching Alliance and because they have these tools that really define these things clearly, clearly what we're gonna focus on, the elm tree being yeah. one of them, effort, learning, and responding, how we bounce back from mistakes. And what I really like about that is it actually acknowledges Hey, we're going to make mistakes. Everyone's going to make mistakes. It doesn't matter that we make mistakes. It's how we bounce back from them, right? It's our effort, even on our good days and our bad days, because sometimes we're not feeling as what is good or we're not playing as well. But it's it's we can always try our best, even when we have a bad game, even when we lose. We we, we focus if we tried our best or if we focus on learning something, and that we are, we're going to make mistakes, and that's how we bounce back from them rather than dwell on them. And it's important to know that it's age appropriate, right? right? I think that's something to think about, right? Is that you're going to deal with a six-year-old different than a sixteen-year-old, right? Sure. And you're going to hold kids accountable and put a bit, you know, greater expectations on different age groups. And understanding that is a big key for player development, right? Because at the end of the day, you know, if you're treating a six-year-old and a sixteen-year-old the same way after you win or lose a hockey game, it's not going to work. And in I, long term. I think there's some important things here to, to to talk about that 
some of the other dangers here because even if we focus on so this is another part of the story, I guess, is even if we're focusing on the right things, uh, effort, for, let's choose effort, for example, sure. I've still at times had, especially with young players, had parents that are maybe frustrated with the lack of effort from their child in a game sure. or perceived lack of effort yeah. from a child in a game, especially at the youth hockey level. Maybe if a team is playing a team that is above their skill level, sure. Um, and they look like they're standing around or they're not being aggressive or whatever. And so now we're upset with them for not trying their hardest or not putting enough effort in, that they're not taking it seriously enough, when there could be a whole bunch of different things going on there. Yeah, that's a big one. So a couple of things, I, a couple of comments on it yeah. is that every age group and every kid is going to be different, right. first of all. And their effort levels are going to fluctuate right. throughout a day, throughout a week, throughout a month, throughout a season, yeah. understanding that, Right. And definitely it's important that the kid has some ownership in the sport. Because if there's zero ownership in it, then you're going to be frustrated all the time with the effort, right? Because it's not coming from within. And yeah. even, if has, even if the player has full autonomy over the ownership of the sport, it's going to fluctuate within his age group, right? You know, at six years old, it's going to be up and down, up and down, up yeah, and down. Right. It's, going to be, it's not going to be a straight what happened, line, right? Yeah, well, how did they feel that day? What did they eat? What happened at school that day? Totally. It affects everything. And, and what I, the, more I, the more I've thought about this, about player development, it, the great one to think about is where, where you are and where you were and where you want to go to. So we talk about like the reverse gap, right? right? So it's like, think about, okay, your, your son's a 10-year-old playing a squirt hockey and he just lost the game 6-5 and he, and he gave the puck away to lose the game, right? And that's just, is that just a devastating end of your career as a hockey player? Or as a parent, as a player, instead of, you know, understanding, dissect, maybe digesting that mistake, hey, I made a mistake there to make sense, you know, didn't, didn't make the right read, whatever it is, move forward, I understand that, I can learn from that, and then having the perspective of taking a look back maybe a couple months ago, a couple seasons ago, where that player was. Oh, wow, geez, I remember when he was seven, and uh, he couldn't even make it through a practice without crying, yeah. or something like that. So that's the reverse gap of knowing where you are and where you were and how far you've come. Yeah. And I think that's sometimes we all can get caught up in that and forget about that, but it's critical to revert and reframe back to kind of that reverse gap of where you were and why you're even doing this in the first and place. And make sure right? the player understands that too, right? Because so, the player's going to be down on themselves that cost the team the game or they think that cost the team the game with the player or a penalty yeah. or something. But I, I think it's really key to, to hone in here too on that external pressure because even what I find a lot of times even even you know the most meaning well parents can get really frustrated if they feel like their kid is not putting the most enough effort out there. So maybe they're focused on the right things. They want their kid to be a good teammate, to be respectful to the coaches and their officials, and to try their hardest all the time because they put a lot of time and money and effort into getting their kid to the rink and making sacrifices for them to be able to play a sport that's not maybe the cheapest sport in the world and all these things. And then when they feel like their kid is not putting out that effort. And so that still is an external pressure. Yep. And it's, it's dangerous, right, for kids who we want to have ownership over that experience. And so maybe we can talk a little bit too about what ha what's happening yeah, in that situation. Yeah, I think Ben, it's not just parents, right? It's coaches yeah, as well, coach, right? Yeah, sure. And I think the more I've thought about, the more I think about it, I, co I went from coaching junior hockey, mm -hmm. where if we didn't win hockey games, I may lose my job, right? right? So uh, understanding that is, is critical, right, in youth hockey is that you're gonna win some, you're gonna lose some, and understanding that perspective. But it's important that as adults, we separate our ego from the results, right? So it doesn't define who we are if you coach and you win a squirt hockey game and you win the squirt B championship as this superstar coach, or if you lose every game as a squirt B coach, right? If you're doing the right things, you're in the right program, right curriculum, all these things have the right values, right? It shouldn't, you can't define who you are or your ego by the results of those scores. Absolutely. Oh, sorry, I'm just, we had some comments here. I was trying to get them up, Paul. Oh, great. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, who you are or your ego by the results. <laughs> got a little feedback. Yeah, there, sorry. Yeah, okay. Uh, Lynn, thanks for the comment. She says, think great for a coach to yell to kids to go after puck along with encouragement. Uh, hello again from Florida. Good info. So, hey, Rick, and hi, Grant. And uh, Karina Paquette. Good to see you. Watch this. Okay. Uh, so I actually want to address this. So uh, Lynn talked about, um, she thinks it's great for, for coaches to yell to the kids to go up to the pocket with encouragement. So, so yes, potentially. Um, encouraging kids to be aggressive, right? So, uh, so when we coach, 
that doesn't mean we're completely quiet, but we're not shouting lots of things for, for pressure on, on the ice, but we want to encourage them certain things. Now, this is, this, this is, this is it was my point, the key point about pressure from externally. We talked a lot about the importance of having an internal motivation with kids wanting to be successful and do for themselves. Um, we want to encourage kids to be to, to try things, right? To make plays, to be aggressive, to go for it, to try their best, right? We don't want to just make this tell them what to do all the time. And so that's where I think a lot of the pressure comes from. Is even sometimes a pressure to work hard could mean could cause someone to yell like skate or to like make a pass or to shoot or do those types of things. And when there's all kind, of, when when it, I just want to kind of go go through. Let's let's think about with a kid what goes on in the mind when there's pressure and there's shouting of different things happening and they feel that pressure to when what happens to the way that they're gonna play. And that's why it's so important with the environment we create as coaches and as parents for the kids with, for them to have some success ultimately. Because I've seen this of kids maybe too that have come up from other programs and on, from a pressure type environment. And so if they feel pressure, right? If they feel like, oftentimes they feel like they can't make a mistake, it's not good to make a mistake. They're supposed to do something, maybe specifically, maybe a specific position or something like that. There's, they have to make the right play because there's all this pressure on it. And if they pass when they should shoot, if they shoot when they should pass, that it's going to be the end of the world. That's going to be a big mistake. So what happens now when they're feeling all this pressure to, to for somebody else's goals or for somebody else's uh, initiatives? Now often can just tighten up and freeze up and not try something creative, not go for it, not go that puck that's 50-50 that maybe they could get to or maybe the other player could get to, instead just back off, right? You see them play very passive and not want to go out of position, those types of things, which again, it's, it's a vicious circle now. It's actually making things worse by them feeling that pressure and pulling back within themselves even more. Yeah, I think as coaches and parents or as fans, right? Non-directional cheering is okay. Yeah. But as soon as we get to start into instructional directions towards each player on the ice, that's when we get into the danger mm -hmm. zone, right? Because think about that. You're a nine-year-old playing on a big NHL ice surface, yeah. right? And there's four other teammates plus your goalie, five other it is. There's all these parents. There's all these kids. And you're skating on a little thin blade that two years ago you couldn't even skate, yeah. right? And you're trying to, you know, have success in a hockey game. And you got, you know, Coach Paul yelling at you what to do. You got Johnny's dad. You got your mom in the stands all yelling, skate, shoot, pass, all these different things, it is really detrimental for players' development, mm -hmm. right? And first of all, they feel so much pressure. That's when the pressure builds, right? They start. They don't. They they can't comprehend even what's happening. The speed, how of sound. Yeah. So when you're yelling something, the speed of sound doesn't reach the player in time for them to even react to what you told them to do, anyways, yeah, yeah. right? So the science doesn't work that way. And there's all these different sounds coming towards them. There's confusion. What we would like to say is there should be one voice, right? And the one voice should be the coach, but the coach should have, there should, there's a time for coaching, there's a time for encouragement, and there's a time when coaching is not saying anything at all. And we've talked Even about Even if that. someone's gonna make a mistake. Of course, yeah. right? Well, hockey's made up of all mistakes, right? And sometimes it's, 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 it's hard as a coach, you gotta take a step back and almost bite your tongue and let them m make that decision, right? And then realize like, oh geez, that was the wrong decision. But just to tell them what to do all the time is, first of all, you can't keep up with the play. Even at might hockey, you can't, right? And there's a complete confusion of what to do. And then when there's not instruction from anyone, and when they're older, they don't know how to play the game of hockey, mm -hmm. right? So it builds up, and it, we, we think we're solving these problems, and we don't want to solve people's problems. It's like giving them the answer on a math test, yeah. right? If I, if I give, your, if you give your son a math test, he's nine years old, uh, is the professor at the front of the classroom just going to yell the answers the whole time? Yeah, yeah. Or, oh, carry the two there, oh, d divide there, d multiply yeah, there. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. If you think about it that way, if you think about it as a laboratory or a classroom, don't give them the answers, mm -hmm. right? Don't be a fan and give them the answers. Let them figure out the answers on their own. The challenge is our test and our, is on display every day and it takes a long time for them to get the right answer. It's got a big scoreboard in front of everybody, <laughs> everybody to see, right? And talk about pressure. At least the math test is maybe private. You yeah, get the and, and, they, private. and they're not gonna get the answer on every, in every yeah. game correctly. And mm -hmm. it's gonna take them several years to become a master in that sport. And even then, there's still gonna be it's another challenge that there's always something yeah, it better, always right? Harder, right? It always gets harder, right? So that, if you think about it like that, it really gives you perspective on what's important and why maybe sometimes 
saying nothing or your you know your son or daughter skates by you and you just give them a thumbs up or just a yeah. you know a little clap smile or, or yeah. a smile like go buddy yeah. like that that's what's going to work more than screaming and yelling skate shoot and all that stuff that actually confuses players and hurts their development right. and at the end of the day it comes back to what we talk about almost every single show right what kind of players and what kind of people do we want to develop and then what so once we understand that what kind of environment do we need to create for that to happen if we want players and people that are going to go for it that are going to believe in themselves they're going to try to make positive things happen they're going to be creative that are right that are, that are going to not give up all these things are are, are taken away by, by feeling too much pressure. If you feel pressure that you're gonna make a mistake, you don't go for it. You think you, you think you can try to put it through your legs around this guy and beat him, but you think you can do it, but you don't wanna try it now because if you make a mistake, that's gonna be the end of, end of the world. And so you're not developing the, these things. And, and that carries over from being a hockey player, like I said, to a, to a, to a person and believe, because it, as a hockey player, as a young kid who loves hockey, maybe that's the one area that they feel they can express themselves completely and try things and they feel like they can They've tried something and now it's, they've gotten better at it and they've gone for it and they've had some success and they've had failure, but then they've bounced back and they kept working at it. That's the kind of thing that now they can take that confidence that they've developed in hockey and somewhere else. And if we take that away from them with pressure, they're not going to be able to have that development. Yeah, right. And then when you talk about mistakes, well, what is a mistake? By whose definition is that a mistake? Say I'm going to one-on-one -on -one and I try to beat a guy and I lose the puck. Is that a mistake? Yeah. Or is it, did I learn something about the next time I take a guy on one-on-one, -on -one, right. right? So it's all you, how you look at that. It's, and I look at it as it's an opportunity to learn, right. right? And I think the more we talk about that as mistakes or opportunity to learn, you'll develop, uh, you know, uh, complete players. Awesome, so Paul, uh, oh, one more, uh, one more comment here. Jeff Gardner, for me as a coach, when I'm yelling, it is a yell of encouragement and motivation, primarily motivation first. It's not that they're not pressuring or hustling, but I'd like them to experience a work ethic that is out of their comfort zone. Good, so again, it depends on the age group as well, yeah. of course, right? Um, and sometimes kids do need some encouragement and things sure. like that, but I think that's where you get back to the, to the one voice and kind of strategically placed at times when versus 10 people doing it at all at different times and constantly. I think if a kid's constantly being being yelled at or being like that's over and over and over again, it can it can be it can be, it can be too much for them, yeah. right? And we still want them to come from within. And again, uh, if if we do everything we can to make sure that the kid loves the sport and wants to be the best that they can, it doesn't take much for them to to work their hardest at it, right? right? And for us to maybe bring them back if they get off track. Well, I just bit. think about it as a player growing up, right? I remember the coaches I had that were just always yelling at you, and you just remember playing like. Why is this guy always yelling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it doesn't even, to kids, it doesn't even make yeah. sense, Yeah. right? Like they're saying, why are all these people yelling at everyone? Like what <laughs> is going on? Like it doesn't make sense to kids because it, because really it's, it, you're not really helping them, mm -hmm. right? You tune out after a while. Totally, while. if there's all these different voices, all these different instructions, you're not helping them and they're they're tuned out and they don't understand why, right? So yeah, they're, they're, there's a place for the positive encouragement, no question. But it's the same thing when they come off the ice, when they make a mistake, right? At a certain age, they don't need me to come over to get in their face and say, hey, that was a bad play. You know that. I can't yeah. believe you did that. Yeah. They know they've Those made a mistake, right? Made, yeah. And as, at a younger age, it's too late already. And it's not, it, it, they don't develop any better by you telling them, hey, that was a mistake, yeah. right? They develop by you pointing out the good things, the positives. Watch them, you know, watch them doing good. Watch them being good. And, and, and do more of that. Too. Yeah, exactly. So we're about 35 minutes okay. now. We'll wrap up. One key thing is we, t we, we brought back, there's a, the, a study that's brought up in a lot of research by PCA and by some of the other blogs and things that we share about the reasons why, unfortunately, which is you know, one of our missions, why 70%, three out of four kids quit sports by the age of high school, by 13, 14 years old, 70% of kids quit sports, quit organized sports altogether, which is, you know, our mission is to, is to, to change that. And one of the number one reasons, pre right? Pressure. No fun. Pressure, no fun. Pre and just pressure from, and uh, uh, Jim that speaks at our PCA uh, uh, parent workshops the last couple of years, he says, pressure from overboard, what is it, overbearing, crazy <laughs> coaches, overbearing, crazy yeah. parents, right? It's, it's basically from the adults. The pressure from the adults on the kids is what and eventually they tune out. It's not them anymore. It's not for themselves. And when they get to the age, high school where they feel they have decision-making power of their own life they say I'm not gonna do this anymore and that's that's a loss for everybody yeah. so thank you very much for watching as always uh, inside the junior reign 
where we give you an inside look on our mission to changing lives through youth ice hockey. Uh, we appreciate you commenting and, and sharing the post if you, uh, if you like what you hear and giving us a thumbs up. Let us know you're watching and we'll, we'll see you next week, Monday, 2 p.m. Pacific time. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys.